Ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. And uh, we have a grey haired beauty coming into the Dean mm. Windows Hall of Fame. Lewis Hogg. Lewis Hogg. Okay. Not a balding smoothie, a grey haired beauty. <laughs> okay, sorry. And it's Fabrizio Ravinelli. Oh, oh it's big time. Yeah. The grey eagle? I forget, to be honest. <laughs> uh, the white feather. The white the feather. White feather that's silver, right, yeah. silver fox, all yeah. that kind of crap. No, definitely the white feather. Okay. Yeah. What? I, for some reason, I'm, I was sure that he was in. But well, he's not. I checked. God. <laughs> White feather. <laughs> <laughs> There's the bell. <laughs> Second right, out. Begin. Um, uh, he was born on uh, December the eleventh, uh, nineteen sixty-eight. Eighteen months after the summer of love. Ooh, oh, he was born in Perugia, home of the Euro Chocolate Festival, Europe's <laughs> premier chocolate festival. <laughs> There are other chocolate you, festivals available. You look like a <laughs> man who knows busy. where the chocolate festivals are. Thank you very much. Where do you think I was last week? <laughs> uh, he is from Peru, uh, Perugia. I think it's a Peru. Yeah. <laughs> Dear, oh dear. Um, uh, one of the early uh, um, marquee signings uh, in the history of the Premier League. Certainly Premier Italian. League. There weren't that many Italians, were there? That's very true. But he was, wasn't he? But more yeah, than that. Great. More than that in a bit. Uh, he is from Perugia. He started his career there. Uh, made his debut um, in his late teens. Scored uh, quite a few goals for them. Perugia was struggling at the time. Um, the interesting um, recent history of that club because they kind of sort of ceased to exist and then they tried to reinvent themselves and they're down in the doldrums but um, they'd just been relegated to Serie T2 after a scandal um, and he was there for three years and got himself a move to Avellino uh, who were in Serie B at the time he didn't stay too long was soon off to Casertana uh, back down to Serie T1 uh, he impressed there got himself a move to Reggiana back up to Serie B so to there, make your hair turn grey <laughs> <laughs> while it's moving this is the reason you're right, Fab Oh, I just don't know where my next <laughs> paycheck's coming from. <laughs> Um, he's annoying thing I'm really good yeah <laughs> he was there two years scoring goals and putting a decent performances um, then in 1992 when he was 24 he was signed by Juventus in Serie A <laughs> now we can all get on board for three, for three million pounds so um, I didn't realise that about um, Ravinelli that he went round the, the lower leagues and it wasn't until he was 24 that he got the, the, the nod from Juventus which is, which is quite in, incredible really because he was um, knocking around the lower leagues as I say uh, and, and Juve had finished runners up to um, Milan in, in the title run in um, went in for him for three million pounds when he was uh, a league below them which is a pretty bold move considering yeah. at the time the other forwards knocking around the league were Van Basten Roberto Baggio who was at Juve uh, Carreca Zola Signori Thomas Chiravi Gianluca Vialli yeah yeah, absolutely. For for a team who finished second, mm. who, who were really <laughs> wanting to mount um, a, a challenge on on Milan, who were great, um, but history's the, proved them to be correct, hasn't it? Just yeah. hasn't it? Just well, allow me. Yeah. Um, in his first full season at Ju- Juventus, they finished fourth, but they won the UEFA Cup, beating Dortmund over two legs. Uh, he was an unused sub for the final, but um, with a front two of Roberto Baggio and Gianluca Vialli, and it, it shows you the strength of the UEFA Cup at the time. So at the final was that Juventus side against that Dortmund side. Yeah. yeah. Andres Moller behind the front yeah. It shows you also One thing you will we'll, we'll also learn Is how the, the strength of, of Italian forwards There were around that time mm. as well cause, Di Canio I mean, was on the bench as well Well, the, oh, exactly, <coughs> the amount, well He never played for Italy Di Canio no, The, the amount true. of strikers that Italy had Who've got um, no, Genuine quality strikers <laughs> who, Who've got it was A few caps You went through there as well yeah. like Signori Baggio Yeah, yeah. Was Zola Ravinelli, Chiesa Ka- Ka- Kazaragi yeah. you know, Mancini a bit before that You know mm. Amazing, really. Absolutely ridiculous. Mm. But so for him to come through and shine at, at Juventus, who in the mid nineties you could make an argument with the best side in Europe. Well, not an argument; they won the bloody Champions yeah. League. But um, they, they got to EPO. <coughs> <laughs> um, uh, so the following season, Juventus finished second, and then in ninety four ninety five season they won the league with, with Ravinelli playing his part. Got fifteen league goals. Juve also won the, the Coppa Italia that year. Uh, and that was his penultimate season um, at the club. Stepping stone. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's got his eye on the prize. Damn right. I mean, he he really became one of their biggest assets in his last two seasons. Scored fifty three goals his last two um, seasons for, 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 for Juventus. It was a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. You know, whatever oh. happened to James Richardson? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Never see that guy. Ever. Yeah. We know before you email in. <laughs> um, he's doing some fine work. So Rav- yeah. Ravinelli um, scored like so many different types of goals. As well. He did. He loved a header. Yeah. He smashed one from outside the area. A lefty. Yeah. Excellent. Um, uh, now it's so interesting to think that he'd gone through the lower leagues and he'd waited his turn and even when he went to Juventus he was again uh, maybe largely on the bench uh, earlier on in his, his uh, career there and now he was delivering for one of the biggest sides and, and, and best teams in the world 
Um, and, and it was during his final year at Juventus that he got his first call up to the national side in, in 1995. He didn't play that much for Italy, only 22 caps and, and 8 goals. Yeah, he had like a four year international career in total and played. Was he not in the squad for. Not World Cup 98, was overlooked. In 96, I think he was in the squad for Euro 96. <laughs> he was and that was squad, it. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> but it's incredible because we all remember Ravinelli and what a brilliant player mm, he was. Yeah, he's so solid. But there's so much more to the career than, yeah. than, than what meets the eye. So back at Juve, they would prove that they were the best side in Europe by winning the Champions League in, in 1996. Um, they'd sold Roberto Baggio the previous summer in, in 95, so. Ravinelli had a, a bigger part to play and my goodness did he just do that uh, during that Champions League campaign he, great performances fair share of goals he, I mean he was one of those players where you'd watch the Champions League highlights which were once every two weeks back then it wasn't mm, quite as, mm. as plentiful as it was and every time Juve came on he was tormenting defences yeah. oh yeah he's, I mean I remember having a pretty good group stage in that tournament yeah. and then he scored obviously the most acute Angled goal in, in Champions League final history. I'd, you've I'd been one of those teams back then uh, that would, you know, if you were ever going to be the sort of person that loves European football, he, ah. th- they were one of those sides that would inspire that. You know, they were one of the absolutely just great, great European sides. And they, you know, it's a, quite a rare time in their history, really, back then, because they don't have much European pedigree. They've only mm. won it twice, which for a club of that size is, right. is unusual. And, they, yeah. they, you know, he was a real kind of focal point of, of one of the best teams they've ever had. Oh, Pe- massive. People our age will sort of remember, look back and sort of remember like Juventus as being like the European force so this is kind of like oh, well, nowadays so they're not quite that really. mm. sure I mean I think they well, got three finals didn't they yeah they did yeah, yeah. and they only won one of them though but he was in that side well Lippi Lippi took them to, to a few finals I think but they had Viali and Del Piero well they had a front Ravinelli, three yeah. against Ajax in the final of Del Piero, uh, Del Piero Viali and Ravinelli yeah. amazing that only ended one all and that, and that Ajax side obviously were defending the title as well weren't they so well they were fantastic they won on penalties um uh, Juventus yeah. did yeah um, and we mustn't forget that uh, this was the guy as well who we'd see on the European highlights and all with that famous celebration which is now so commonplace yeah. <laughs> well and not so much now because you get booked for it yeah. FIFA brought in a rule because of him yeah. <laughs> that stupid dancing one right not quite no it's uh, it the chicken uh, it is the chicken <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that's not a stupid dance Jim and he passed the baton on to Kevin Nolan when he retired <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it's so funny wasn't it flipping his jersey over his head and running around <laughs> like it's such a simple thing but he was like the guy yeah. Yeah. Wherever that, the which football team have got like the bur- sponsored by the Burger King and they've oh, got like the uh, Burger King Pretty yeah. tough here, they're pretty on the other side, so if you actually do that, you become the Burger King. That's it. Briefly. It's Nobody's all very, done it yet. No, very sad, isn't it? <laughs> it really but, is. But that celebration is so iconic, isn't it? Because mm. I was thinking it's so like, simple. Because so before simple. that, I was thinking there were certain things that couldn't be commercialised, and I was wrong. <laughs> 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 Again. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, that game in the in the Champions League final against Ajax, where he was on top of the top of the Europe's, uh, was his last game for the club. He just won the European Champions League with the Juventus. Um, where would he end up next? He thought, yeah, thinking, my- "How can I top this? <laughs> <laughs> I've earned myself a big move here. No one will begrudge me." <laughs> and to the northeast of England, he went yeah. and Middlesbrough. Do you Magical. remember that? Do you remember? Yes, the, like, really do you remember the, the BT cell. It happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hat trick on his debut. To I be know, fair, to against Liverpool. Yeah. But as Jim says, you know, when it was like, oh yeah, you, Middlesbrough have signed Ravinelli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those ones. What show it? me the quotes. Yeah. yeah. Oh bloody hell! Yeah. Show me like a that. picture of him wearing the shirt <laughs> <laughs> next, to Brian, Ro- next to Brian <laughs> Robson. <laughs> was it? Was it? Oh, you have. Was it seven or eight million? Seven. Seven. seven million. Seven mil. Um, immediately started uh, scoring goals, as you say, Hatcher against Liverpool on his debut, and it was great to see this 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 guy who, who was uh, <laughs> so good for Juventus doing that celebration in in England, yeah. you know. And that's what I mean, you know. When it, he was one of the the earlier marquee signings in in the history of the, the Premiership, for my money, anyway. Well, that's some good results I see them as a brand. Yeah, they were only relegated because of that three point deduction, weren't they? But they um, we could have had that many results. It was three points, but I take you. I well, no, yeah, that. I mean, they, no, because they were they were just woefully. Well, they, got to two, they got to two cup finals. Yeah, and 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 they beat um, they beat Everton home and away. They beat Coventry four 0 They beat Derby six one. Yeah, they, they drew with Liverpool Man United. I mean, they really. I mean, yes, it was a three point deduction, but they were they were better than that. Yeah, absolutely. They really and, were. And the three point deduction for people who are either too young, scarily, to remember, or, or don't just don't remember, is because they refused to fulfil a fixture against Blackburn Rovers because they said that a load of their players were injured or ill. And the FA refused them, or the Premier League, whoever it was, refused them and fined them three points. And they ended up getting relegated by two points, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And they never got to the League Cup final and the FA Cup final. Yeah, yeah. He got 31 goals in, in, in League and Cup games that year for Borough, which is incredible. One se- and, and, and didn't he leave just after the start of the following season? He did, yeah. I mean, again, only what less than 18 months after winning the <laughs> Champions League, there he was in, in the old Division 1. 
Yeah, that's nuts. So Dreams thought, can come true. He thought <laughs> sod this, so he left for Marseille. Back yeah. when, back when the um, uh, Italian uh, English Cup actually still existed. Oh, the Anglo Italian. Oh, Anglo -Italian oh Italian yeah, I've yeah. seen a few of those games. You I remember the Anglo Italian Cup for some reason. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, now Marseille was runner up in the UEFA Cup and, and, and the league in, in 99 scored a few goals there but after a poor start in the year 2000 he went back to Italy with, with Lazio and he, he wasn't won... good at Lazio was he yeah, I mean he, he played a fair bit but I mean they won the, the, the league for only the second time in their history they also won the, the Coppa Italia I don't think he scored year. many goals though no but it's it's funny and then after that he, he went to um, back to England to play for Derby County but it's so strange how you know he goes from the lower leagues to Juventus right the highs and then Middlesbrough gets relegated then mm. goes to Marseille finishes Runner up, and it, you know, had a far better side, Incredible obviously. Sort of, you know, and then, and then yeah, 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 but then Marseille, they don't do so well. He goes to Lazio, wins the league there. Then he's yeah. back at Derby County. It's yeah. really up and down <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Him looking at that pattern of his career, how's he thinking? Yeah, I've got a Derby now. Yeah, know, That's going to yeah. end this run, yeah. and they got relegated as well when he was I, there. From memory, I don't have the facts to hand, but from memory, he didn't score many goals for Lazio. I don't think he was a big player for them. No, in that, in that season, no, no, he, he, he wasn't. But he's, you know, I'm mean, not taking it away from him. You know. Yeah, I literally can't. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Looking at a bar graph of, of success, it's like Janino, him, Janino, him, yeah. mm. up, down, up, down. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he did. He did <laughs> <laughs> Never stopped you before. <laughs> <laughs> can, we put, can we put Emerson in next week? Uh, <laughs> Shut up, everyone. <laughs> um, he, he did. Uh, um, hang around the uh, old English first division for a bit before uh, leaving Derby County and then went to uh, Dundee in Bonnie Scotland played a handful of games there and left uh, to go all the way back to the start uh, his beloved Perugia in uh, 2004 couldn't help them <laughs> from, from being relegated as the strug uh, the strug the club struggled on and off the field and he hung up his boots in 2005 I, I think I'm right in saying that he only ever started one big tournament game for Italy I and think when, so And yeah. when you think of um, And I think I was going to Czech Republic And you were in like six And, and when you think of the, the, the name And the reputation of the player Absolutely You imagine him to have Really achieved a lot more than that yeah, I think eight there. goals in 22 Appearances, appearances right. for Italy But it's That's Decent Yeah but it's, but it's such a strange career Because I, you think Ravenelli You think Juventus You think um, You know Being brilliant for Middlesbrough as well mm. um, But it, it, there's so much more But one, one of, certainly one of the showpiece foreigners to, to grace the Premier League I'd say Oh definitely, in, in, definitely. That, in that one season He sort of sh he shone briefly But, but very brightly mm. and, it, and it'll always be in our hearts and minds For that celebration Alone, and yeah. then he comes to the Dean Wendell sort of hey. from Richmond and Ravenelli. I just remember like him and Viali just start thinking they don't look like young men they don't look like men <laughs> under 30 yeah, yeah. Viali's one of those people like Bruce Forsyth he was just born at like 40 years old <laughs> yeah that's very true he looks so odd with his curly hair when he was younger uh, <laughs> suit him